Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about smart email validation for Dataverse. Keep in mind, this is different from the smart email validation for leads and contacts as part of Dynamics 365 sales. Let's first talk a little bit about how that smart email validation works. So the first thing that you need to do is enable it on your environment, and then you would need to enable it on your model driven apps as well. It could be one, it could be multiple, but once you've done that, then you will see that the model driven app that are, that are using text columns with the data type of email, will automatically be validated if a new record is created. However, the validations are not performed on email addresses that are bulk imported, right? So I should say records that have email addresses that are bulk imported. Now, the other thing that's important to understand is that the smart email validation currently only works with model-driven apps and not for Canvas apps, so keep that in mind as well. And then what exactly does this feature check for, right? Well, when a user changes the email address of a record in a model-driven app or when they create a new record where the email address is populated, the system is going to check that email address that's populated in that email address column, right? So users don't have to wait for the record to be saved because as soon as the email address is entered, the verification will run immediately and then show those results. Now, I found that what the system checks for is, is very similar to what the email validation for leads and contacts checks, which makes sense, right? So you kind of see that here on the screen. So disposable emails, or I should say the disposable domains, right? Any email addresses that contain a known temporary or disposable email domain, then expired email addresses, uh, emails that bounce back obviously as well, and then incorrect syntaxes, and then test or spam email addresses as well. So that's just a little bit about how it works, but now let's take a look and first see how we can enable this and then I will show you what this looks like in the model driven app. So to enable this in your environment, you would have to go to the Power Platform Admin Center and then open the correct environment. From there, you're going to click here on Settings. And then once that loads, you're going to expand the product section over here. And then you're going to click here on Features. Now, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see the data validation option here on the bottom. So make sure that you turn that on and then obviously save that as well. So once you've done that, now you would need to go to any model driven apps and enable it there as well. So I'm just going to go to my apps. I'm going to turn this on for the sales hub. Well, I already did, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to click here on this ellipse and then you're going to click edit. And from there, you're going to click on settings. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And you can see here that we have general features, navigation and upcoming. So you're going to go to upcoming and here you can see the enable smart email address validation control. So this is how you can enable that control. And if you have multiple model driven apps that you want to enable this for, then yes, you would have to go and set this little toggle to yes in each individual model driven app. All right. So now let's take a look on what that looks like in that model driven app. So I'm going to go ahead here in my sales hub and you can see here, I actually added the email address to field. Um, as I said earlier in the beginning, right in the introduction of 
this video, I already talked to you about the email validation feature, which went into public preview back in October of 2022. And that's still available today, but it's different from what I'm showing you guys today. So this is actually what happens and what shows, right? You get this little notification, the email address doesn't seem to be valid. So this is different from what I'm showing you today, because even after I save it, you still see this little icon that says, oh, the email address is not valid. This is different because first of all, right, it doesn't just work on this primary email field, but also, as I said earlier, on other email fields as well. And here's the difference, right? So it now shows me that this email address, the domain is unknown. There's something wrong with it, right? But it still is going to allow you to save this record with this incorrect email address, right? I want to say, so when I hit save, and then let me just go ahead and refresh this. You can see now that we don't have a visual telling us that there's something wrong with this email address, right? Which the other feature does show that. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Also, you don't have to save the record for the, the email checking, so to speak, to happen, right? If I actually enter this in here, you can see it immediately starts to check that email address and then it's letting me know again whether or not there is something wrong with that email address. And here on this slide, you can see a couple of the differences between the smart email validation that I showed you in this video versus the lead slash contact email validation, right? So smart email validation is running on all text fields with that data type of email, while the lead contact email validation is only running on their primary email address column. Then for the smart email validation, you saw there's no visual warning after we save the record. And then if we reopen it, we will not see that visual warning. However, for that lead contact email validation, we will see that visual warning if that email address is not valid also after the email has been saved, or I should say after the email address have been saved. If I reopen that record, we still see that visual warning. And then lastly, for smart email validation, we do not have an option to mark an email address as valid, which we do have in the lead contact email validation. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching, until next time.